Hey guys, welcome to my video on the markup formula and the learner index. Here's what we're going to be working with today. There's this equation that comes up in our monopoly chapter. Price minus marginal cost divided by price equals the negative of one divided by the price elasticity of demand. Before we dig into this, let me just build an example for us. I'm not going to get into the heavy proofing. That's all in your textbook. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm just going to first do an example where we show if this works and then we'll work at it from a different angle. Like if I gave you a price and a marginal cost, could you get your elasticity? Stuff like that. But let's set up a problem. Demand curve, 2000 minus 2P equals the quantity demanded. Total cost, 200 Q. Nice and convenient for the easy YouTube video. And we, let's first just take a minute and solve for the quantity, the price, and the elasticity of demand. If you need practice, this is a good time to pause the video and do it yourself. All right, I'm assuming you've done it by now, if you're ever going to, let's get to work. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to invert my demand curve. Q equals 2000 minus 2P, which means 2P equals 2000 minus Q, which means P equals 1000 minus half a Q. I know it was a little speedy, but deal with it. Now, I also told you long ago that when you have straight demand curves, there's an easy shortcut for the marginal revenue. It is that the marginal revenue curve will have the same intercept and it will have double the slope. So two times a half is just one. Uh, that all comes out of the calculus. I can show you sometime if you care. All right, let's do the cost side. Total cost equals 200 Q. Marginal cost is the derivative of that with respect to Q. In this case, just 200. So let's maximize our profit. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. 1,000 minus Q equals 200, which means Q equals 800. There, we got our monopoly quantity. Now we plug it into the demand curve or the inverse demand curve. Price equals 1,000 minus half of 800, which is 1,000 minus 400 which is 600. All right, we've got a monopoly price. There's that. I forgot to highlight that. Now, the elasticity, check the corner again for the elasticity video if you need it. But don't forget the price elasticity of demand is the derivative of the demand curve with respect to the price times the price over the quantity. Now, with this demand curve, what's the derivative? That's the slope. With straight lines, it's really easy. In this case, it's just minus two. So we're gonna put a minus two in there. So let's see, minus two times P over Q. Well, we solve for P is 600. We solve for Q is 800. This comes out to be negative 1200 over 800 or minus three halves or 1.5 if you prefer. All right, we got our price elasticity of demand. Okay, first thing, let's verify if our learner index works. And then we'll talk about what it means. So let's see, that's 600 minus 200 over 600 equals 400 over 600, which is two thirds. Okay, there's the left hand side. Let's see if that is equal to negative one over negative three halves. Well, those negatives cancel out. And then one over three halves is two thirds. All right, so this chunk comes out to two thirds. This chunk comes out to two thirds. We verified it, at least for this example. If you want a full proof, go look in your book. Now, let's talk about this formula real quick. P minus MC over P. This is our markup formula. It's the learner index. Price is price, marginal cost is marginal cost. But let's talk about each part. Price minus marginal cost is however much higher your price is than the cost of producing the last unit you sold. That's how much extra money over the cost you're charging. When you divide that by the price, it tells you the percentage of your price that is markup above marginal cost. So if this number gets close to one, that would mean almost all of your price is markup. 
If it gets close to zero, that means there's almost no markup. And this equation is limited by the elasticity of demand, where the more elastic we are, the bigger this denominator gets, the smaller this whole number gets, the more elastic our consumers are, the smaller our markup has to be. Likewise, the less elastic we are, the smaller this gets, the bigger that gets, the more markup we can get. Okay, so there's that in a nutshell. Now let's just take this from a couple of different angles uh, real quick. What if we had, instead of having to solve a full monopoly problem, what if I had just told you that your marginal cost was equal to 200 and your price, your optimal price was 600. And I asked you, what's your elasticity of demand? A similar question, I might give you a marginal cost of 200 and an elasticity of demand of minus 1.5 and ask you, what price should we set? Likewise, I could also ask you, you have a price equals 600 and an elasticity of demand of negative 1.5. What can we guess the firm's marginal cost is based on that information? So how would I set each of these up? They're all just variations on the same theme. We know this formula because we trust the proof in our book because I didn't prove it. Uh, we're, we're trusting that's true. So let's see, what's that gonna look like? P minus MC, 600 minus 200 divided by 600 is equal to one over the elasticity of demand with a negative. Uh, we already solved this left-hand side comes out to be two thirds and that's equal to one over the negative elasticity of demand, which means if we rearrange this stuff, the price elasticity of demand is equal to negative three halves. And I just multiplied both sides by negative, or sorry, by the price elasticity of demand and multiplied each side by three halves. Uh, so I didn't have to go back and do this step. I just knew it based on our formula. Okay, let's see if that works. So let's see how that would might look over here. Here's a marginal cost and an elasticity. Can we set a price based on our costs and off of what we know about our consumers, even if we don't have a full demand curve estimate? Yes, because I know price minus marginal cost divided by price has to equal negative one over negative 1.5, which let me rearrange that real quick. One over 1.5, which is two over three. Okay, uh, so let's see, price minus 200 over P equals two thirds, which means P minus 200 equals two thirds P which means one third P equals 200, which means P has to be 600. Hey, look, that was right too. If your problem gives you this much information, you can solve for the ideal price. And then the last one, you can probably figure this one out on your own. If we give you a price and an elasticity, what can we say about the marginal costs? Same idea, plug everything we know into the equation. Price, minus, oops, no price minus marginal cost over price equals one over negative the elasticity of demand. Oops, but we know that. My bad, I keep doing this. Which means that's gonna come out to be two thirds on this side. So I know that 600 minus MC has to equal two thirds of I'm getting ahead of myself. Two thirds of 600, which means that's 400. So 600 minus 400 equals MC, which means MC is 200. All right, so we just verified it from three different angles. 
if we had marginal cost and price, we can solve for elasticity. If we have marginal cost and elasticity, we can solve for price. If we have price and elasticity, we can solve for marginal cost. In every case, what did we do? We plugged in the information we knew into this guy. Uh, so I hope that's helpful to you. If not, too bad, but good luck anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, see you next time.